So we have a really simple mechanic in the game that we're making that if the foliage is out of sight of the player, then it can grow. But if it's within line of sight of the player, then it won't grow. So all this grew. And now that the stuff in back of me is out of line of sight, if I turn back, okay, now it's grown. And this is a really useful mechanic to just know how to do generally because there could be all sorts of things that are running literally out of line of sight and taking up CPU resources. And if there's really no reason to do that, if something's out of line of sight, then you should be able to differentiate is something within line of sight of the player or not. So here's a really quick way of being able to differentiate whether or not something is within line of sight of the player or really within line of sight of anything. And I recommend doing this on a blueprint function library. And the reason is because I think this is a function that will be useful in a myriad of situations. So blueprint function libraries and we'll go into that and I'm going to create a new blueprint function library BFL general and we'll go into that and I'm going to call this function location behind actor check and I thought about passing in the actual actor into the function but I think it's easier to just pass in a location and a rotation of that actor and it doesn't even have to be an actor in my case I'm going to use a component I'm going to use the actual camera component because I don't want it to be out of line of sight of the player character per se I want it to be out of line of sight of the camera so we can add three inputs so we're going to have our anchor location and this is going to be a vector Actually, I should clarify anchor world location and then another plus sign. This is going to be the anchor world rotation. This is going to be a rotator. Emphasis is on the wrong syllable and we're going to add one last thing, the comparison location. So this is the location of the object that we are comparing to. The anchor is the thing that's going to have line of sight and then the comparison location is whatever we're looking to. Is that within line of sight? So I'm going to promote each of these to a local variable. And if you've seen me in the series, you know that I've got certain habits. One of those habits is we're just going to give them the same exact name, except put local in front. So local anchor world location, local anchor world rotation and local comparison location. OK, so we got our three variables and we're going to start this just by doing a print string because I find for anything mathematical, it's just helpful to see it actually visualize, like see the math on the screen. And we're going to print basically the delta rotation, the difference in rotation, comparing this rotation to the rotation. Well, let me just do it. So we're going to get our local actor world location and our local comparison location. And we need to find the look at rotation. So what is the rotation? For this location to look at this location and then we're comparing this rotation with our local anchor world rotation and I'm calling this anchor rather than actor because it could be a component rotation that we're passing in like the camera and we're going to compare these two rotations and I know this might not make sense yet but I think it will once you see the print string so I'm going to split this rotator because really what we want is the z-axis and the z-axis is this axis that turns to the left or to the right. So you know this trick before, if you followed me, I always do an append on a print string, delta z rotation, and we connect up the z to the b. So whenever we call this function, this is going to print the difference between this rotator and this rotator. Compile and save. So now let's go into our third person character blueprint because you heard me say what I want to use is the camera of the third person character. And I'm just going to do this on the event graph. I'm going to do it on event tick. Now, obviously don't do this on event tick for whatever you're doing, but just for the purposes of comparing those two rotators, I want you to see in real time that comparison. So we can call our location behind actor check function. And what I'm going to pass in is the follow camera reference. And I'm going to pass in the get world location. So the follow camera is going to be our anchor location. And then the camera, we can also get the world rotation. And make sure you do world here, not relative. And what do we want to compare against? So this is the question, right? So depending on your circumstance, you're going to want to compare to a different actor, whether or not that actor or that instance of an actor, in the case of my foliage that I was showing earlier, you want to get that particular location of that actor or instance, and that's what you're comparing to. So I might as well just build off of what we did in the last two quick tutorial episodes, the doorway BP. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to get an actor of class, and this is hugely inefficient to do every single tick. But just for the case of demonstration, do not actually do this on tick. You know, if you want to get a reference once, just do it on begin play, save it as a variable, and then you can continue using that reference. But just for the case of this demonstration. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get that actor and we're going to get the actor location. And that's the world location of that actor. And that's going to be our comparison location. And we'll connect this up. So compile and save this. And what you should see when I'm playing, you're going to see whether or not I'm facing this doorway. So we'll play from here. 
So right now it's printing, and you see that over there on the left-hand side, so the delta Z rotation. So if that delta Z rotation is zero, that means my camera is looking straight at that actor. Now you'll notice as I turn my camera, now it's closer to 90 because it's basically a 90 degree angle away from the doorway. And over here, it's negative 90. And so the way you can tell whether or not the thing is in view of the camera is you can set a threshold, right? So you could say, okay, if that angle is greater than 80 or if it's greater than 90 would be really safe, then you know, and it's gotta be an absolute angle, right? Because it's negative 90 or positive 90. But if it's greater than that, then you know that that actor is outside the range of our camera. So we're just gonna finish up our logic here. So we go back to BFL general and we can get rid of our print string. We don't need that anymore. And instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the absolute value of that Z that we talked about. And if you really wanna be safe, what you can do is set this to maybe be like 95, like 95 degrees. So that's gonna be definitely outside. And then from here, we can just add a return node and we're gonna return a true or false value. So that's gonna be a plus sign. And then we're gonna return whether or not it's behind the anchor because, and this has to be a Boolean, because if it is greater than 95, then we know it's behind. So we'll compile and save this and then back over on third person character. So we get our return value here. And then you could use this to do whatever you want. So if it's within the line of sight, then you might wanna have it do something. And if it's outside a line of sight, you might wanna have it do something. So I'll just do another print string just to show you an example. But if it's true, we're gonna say print string and we're gonna say behind the camera. And if it's false, then we're gonna say within view of the camera and connect that up. So let's give it a whirl. Within view of the camera, behind the camera, within view of the camera. So that's a really quick way to assess whether or not a particular actor is looking straight at, rotated straight at another actor. So I hope to see you in the next one.